This is Richard Wolff from Democracy at Work with another response to a question, an Ask Prof. Wolf question, from our Patreon community. This question comes from John Ferrer, and it concerns the relationship between the anarchist theoretician and leader Mikhail Bakunin and Karl Marx. And so it opens the whole space for a discussion of the relationship between anarchism and Marxism. And like all the great questions about Marxism and anarchism, it is subject to the different understandings of what those terms mean, to the different interpretations of the philosophies of these two major figures from the 19th century. It also is complicated by the fact that Marx and Bakunin worked together to start the uh, international back in the middle of the 19th century, knew each other, worked with each other, and had a kind of theoretical alliance coupled with strong disagreements. So I will not pretend, as I think many others have, that what I'm about to say is the word on the subject. Everybody's interpretation is just that, an interpretation, and mine is no different uh, in that it's an interpretation based on a a way of reading what these two uh, thinkers had to say. So here's the gist of it. What both men agreed on, and what anarchists and Marxists often agree on to this day, is the critique of capitalism and the sense that society could and should do better than capitalism. That is, both Marxism and anarchism have a deep, long-lasting commitment to socialism as the name of the next system, the system we can build on the basis of capitalism and yet break from capitalism to something that's better for most people. A further area of agreement between Marxists and anarchists, at least most of the time, has been that the state is part of what has to go, that the function of the state is to reproduce the dominant class structure. So in capitalism, the state is the servant of capitalism. Its activities, however it pretends to represent everybody, are mainly geared to reproducing the dominant position of capitalists within a capitalist system. In a way, slave states reproduced slavery, states in the feudal period reproduced feudalism, and states in the capitalist era reproduce capitalism, and that therefore the state is the enemy of both anarchists and Marxists because of its role as a major support for capitalism's reproduction. So then where do they disagree? Their major disagreement is on what Marx sometimes referred to as the role of a state that could represent the working class during an intermediate period from the collapse of capitalism when the state no longer reproduced it, but before the establishment of socialism, there would need to be a state that could serve the interests of an emerging socialism by blocking the use of the state to reproduce capitalism. In other words, Marx's notion of the state as existing in a transitional period was not an endorsement of the state or a thought that the state should exist within socialism, but should be a tool, a way for the working class to have more power to make the transition from capitalism to socialism. This was anathema to Bakunin, who wanted a direct and pretty much immediate assault on the state uh, to get rid of it, Uh, and that that was not acceptable, Marx's idea of a temporary transitional role for a state or a state apparatus. And so that has remained part of the opposition 
that is often found alongside the alliance between anarchists and Marxists. Some of you may have heard the phrase, the withering away of the state, and you may know that that was an objective of the Soviet Bolsheviks who made the revolution there in 1917. The very phrase, withering away of the state, was a statement by their leader, Lenin, uh, to underscore that their objective as Marxists included the removal of a state from the society because you were getting rid of the class opposition between capitalists and workers and therefore did not need a a state apparatus to enforce that division. So then why the antagonism? Well, there are many reasons, not the least of which, particularly in the United States, has been that the Cold War since 1945, in other words, a very long time, 75 years, was phrased as a war between the United States and the Soviet Union, between capitalism and socialism, uh, and that therefore the great demon to be avoided was anything to do with socialism, and that usually meant Marxism and so on. Anarchism kind of got pushed to the side. It wasn't a large major movement. There was no society that embraced it as such, no leadership, since partly anarchists don't want that. Uh, And so it wasn't the subject of the same kind of persecution and hostility, even though there are plenty of moments in American history where anarchism was the designated uh, demonization uh, of choice at the time. So anarchism is a way for people to be leftist that at least raises the question here in the United States, what exactly is it? What does it mean? People believe they know what socialism means, Russia, China, Cuba, and so on. They believe they understand that. Uh, They don't quite get what anarchism is. Plus, there's this peculiar libertarian strain in the United States that makes hostility to the government attractive to Americans, and anarchism then becomes the left-wing version of all of that. And that may explain also why it resurges from time to time. The basic conclusion I draw from this is that Marxists and anarchists, socialists and anarchists, have much more in common than divides them. There ought to be, and there often has been, practical collaborations, alliances, coalitions between them for all kinds of fights against capitalism. Let them debate the pros and cons of a temporary transitional state. Let them debate the pros and cons of the withering away of the state, how that happens, how fast that happens, the forms it takes. That should not prevent the collaboration on the enormous areas of agreement that can be summarized as the critique of capitalism and the advocacy of a transition to socialism. This is Richard Wolff for democracy at work.